e Barcelona. Public infrastructure. e Barcelona. Connecting everybody together. So it's really about starting the cultures to leave it better than you found it, right? Nonprofits to make profit. Really, truly altruistic. Could we have war without being payrolling it? Provide value for society. Sell everything I own and become a hippie. DAOs will be to corporations as democracies were to monarchies. Ended up getting a master's degree in digital currency. So we built a community. We hacked the DAO for the rest of the money. We had to give that back to everybody. The only hack where everybody won. Giving people agency and making things fun. Focusing on what we needed to focus on. Giving people agency and making things fun. Reward value creation. Cooperation. Create sustainable, regenerative commons. Governments and taxes out of the equation. Actual design. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the, sta to the forest stage here at East Barcelona. We're about to begin our afternoon program. I wanted to introduce you to Rika from, uh, from Guild XYZ. She is the founder. Come on up. Yeah. You're welcome. Hello, everybody. I'm incredibly happy that I don't have a mic in my hands because I speak a lot with my hands. So this is a radical opportunity. Thank you so much for the introduction. Um, I'm the non-technical founder of Guild XYZ, and I've been building organizations IRL as a hobby and now as a profession for a few years. And we have some really interesting findings moving into the DAO space and this whole IR, mixing IRL and remote first and like URL organizations. And I'd like to tell you everything that I, we've went through and kind of give, this is a very, very practical talk. So this is not the theories and the ideologies behind it. This is like a step-by-step -step guide of how to build more strength and resilience into your own company, organization, community, product community, whatever you're building. Because whichever you choose to build out of those, inherently you're also building an organization. But it's just a question of nomenclature. So we're just talking about the groups of people that work together, essentially. And I'm just going to call them organizations throughout the talk. Um, and yeah, let's dig into it. It's arguably more important to build the most resilient and optimal organization than the product itself, if you're a product community. And this is one of the reasons um, why I wanted to give this talk, because just recently, um, we really found out how important this truly is because you know you're doing a good job at it as a leader, as a manager, as a whatever horizontal or hierarchical structure you have, whatever your position is, you know you're doing a good job when the, it doesn't matter what the market circumstances are, it doesn't matter what the vibe and the sentiment of the whole ecosystem is, or if you use, lose all of your code that you've built, any catastrophe that can happen with a digital company, you can still look at your team and feel like you can build this whole thing up together and have this strength in your relationships between the people that you're working together with. And we recently had this feeling when we had our offsite not too long ago, like two months ago, and I can't tell you how unstoppable that makes you feel. We could lose the whole of Guild XYZ that we built in the past years and launched recently and I would be you know sad for a few days but I know that we have such a strong team and community and everything that we've built um, that it can survive and I want you to have the same so this is the talk um, and yes let's dive into oh perfect it's changing nicely so I'm not going to go into the full organization of structures that we can talk about I'm only going to show this one uh, this is the consensus in Web3 that we're going towards. This is what I hear most people talking about. It's called TL organizations. If you want to look it up, I, read, I highly recommend reading about them. The core idea here is that this whole system is like a self-sustaining organism, and it's built on meritocratic and egalitarian like policies or ideologies. These just mean that everybody has an equal chance and that they're judged by what they're doing and not like financials, how many tokens they have, and stuff like that. And these are the two verticals, the bigger and stronger, that I'm going to talk about. This is like the core message in the whole talk of how to switch between the two and how important these phases and seasons are. Um, growing bigger 
I mean, by that I mean establishing new business development opportunities, hiring new people, getting more reach in your social media, whatever that makes new things for your organization, that's what I mean by growing bigger and growing stronger is establishing and strengthening the relationships that you have with these, with the new people and the people that are already in the organizations. Um, and what we found is that to have this like most productive and effective way of working together, um, we have to go in seasons between these. You can't just switch to, you can't just keep on growing mode because we see so many companies fail. I'm going to give an example in a second. Uh, but what works with us with Guild Team is that we have longer seasons of growth periods and strengthening periods. It kind of came naturally, but now I, now I see that retrospectively as a pattern. And what we do is we have about one to three months, depending on whatever is happening in the company, as like a growth period. But in that we have like short sprints of growth or strengthening, which is like a few days to a week. And this is to match the everything else that's happening in the space, match, match like people's needs that they are on vacation or they're tired or they are energetic a little bit. That's just, you know, as a woman in the company, match cycles as well, because that changes productivity as well. Um, and you have to change between these ever so often, and I recommend seasons. And the people that are, um, wait, I'll show you an example. So I made these little circles, the little purple circle here, shows the initial organization and it's like a strong purple once the company or the organization goes into like gigantic growth mode it dilutes it so so much the community the productivity the efficacy of the work the communications the responsibilities the value alignment everything and just to give you an example i always say this because this is my like one of my friends was the community manager at Olympus DAO. It was, it still is a protocol, and they had a gigantic community, heavily financially incentivized, and within a year they grew like an, you know, unprecedented amount, and it really, really showed, both on the financial side and the community side, and it really showed because it fell apart. The community fell apart. They had so many contributors. They had to get rid of them because there was no productivity left in the system because they grew so fast. And what I recommend doing is not to just catch up, to catch up with the growth and just do a little bit of growth and then a strengthening. This is what I talked before, but this is like the visual representation of it, of like have some growth and then do strengthening. Because otherwise, if you only strengthen, it's not gonna be growing. It's just gonna be secluded and growing stronger, but not gonna grow. You have to grow, but don't do it too fast. Take time to strengthen yourselves. And the people who are responsible for like the health and the flourishing of the company, whoever that is, or the organization, whoever that has that role. These are like facilitators and the social strategies people. With Guild, it's our CEO, Bruno, and myself included. We constantly search and look for signals within the team, within the whole community, within our very loose, like only Twitter community everywhere. Um, and we kind of, Take, we are very, very susceptible to different signs from these inputs. And we put our heads together and we find issues and then we solve them and um, have reflection periods as well. For us, it goes really, really naturally because we have like gut feelings for it. If you don't have that gut feeling or your, your experience is you don't have experience, I highly recommend scheduling these uh, reflection periods and going through the points that I'm going to show right now and do it every month from like top up. Um, or top down, sorry. By that, I'm not, I don't mean like a hierarchical top down. I mean more like whose role is it to look out for people's, the organizational health, top down and then bottom up as well. But bottom up, which means scanning the company for feedback by um, surveys, by one on one conversations, by everything that should happen. It's also subjective, but like six months is a good rate to do that. And yes, the reflection point, bullet points. You can also take notes. This is also going to be online, whatever you decide. Priorities is the first one. Uh, this is something that comes from the very core of why you started this whole organization, the whole purpose, the mission. And this is like covering your whole philosophy and the mission, vision, values, trifecta sounds so corporate-y and I hate how I have to say this, but you guys know what I mean if I say it this way. Uh, but you have to do it to have efficient teamwork. and. 
look at the whole picture that way. And you really have to decide um, about if everything fails, what should work? This is in between those three somewhere. And if, anything, if everything fails, what is something that you want to hold on to and still keep on working on it? Um, for us, it's culture. But the point is that you have to make everybody aligned with that what should work at all costs. And that way, it's going to have a much nicer environment. So for us, the number one and number two are culture. And then we're super passionate builders. And like this passionate loving of like work that you do is super important for us to keep up. And this is like a joker card because culture not only has like the vibe in the office and in other discord and, you know, in our group chats, but it also has like the output that we make, like the actual product feels different because of our culture, the events that we do, the work style that people have within the organizations, the leadership style, the role management, that everything essentially is affected by culture. So it's kind of like, you know, saying the most obvious thing, but for us it really is the most important. And kind of to say a little bit more about our value systems to give you pointers and exacts what are good examples. It could be anything that you decide on. For us, we're this experimental builders and very passionate about it. And we don't fret from like sunsetting projects and leaving things behind. It doesn't matter for us that we put a lot of work in it. If it doesn't work or people don't like working on it, we leave it. Like that's very, very important for us to keep this, this culture up. Also, we're super honest and explicit. I think that might come from the Gen Z leadership. I don't know, but it's hard to maintain instant feedback. It's super hard to be that self knowing and knowing each other and trusting each other that much, but giving instant feedback to the other one so, so important and skips like weeks of miscommunication. It's something that you constantly have to keep improving, but it's super important. And then next point, responsibilities. This, I have a personal story how we messed this up a little bit, but first a little more generalizing. So when the organization's tiny, you have like four people, everybody does a little bit of everything. And as you grow, we're now 25 people you have to create sub areas, areas of responsibility and kind of naturally. So how it grows is you have your orange circle. That's your little like team who started it, like the three, four people who actually were there in the, initially. And then you grow this gigantic organization with the like black outer circle. And then there's this study that I put in just to look smart, but, and also that I, I researched this thing, but it says that there's specific numbers of people that can effectively work together. And 15 is the one that where knowledge exchange still works up above anything that doesn't work. It just fails. It can work to like a day or something. If you're trying to host a Twitter space, it might work, but it's not going to work long term. So with these subgroups, stay above or underneath 15 and actual productive work happens only at five. That's the like minimum, like the atom of the whole group that has to be built up. Also, and the decisions, why I put it there is that as the organization grows, decision making has to be centralizing and decentralizing at the same time. By that, I mean, you have to incite, that's why it's so important that you know the people that you work with, because you have to incentivize them to make decisions on their own. Because as the group grows, there's no way that everybody, or there's one person that can make a decision about everything. So every pink circle has to have a decision maker in it. And this way you make this decision tree. And obviously if it's a decentralized community, you can decentralize Lee or decentralized way appoint somebody who makes that decision, but there's definitely need, like there's somebody who has to call the shots no matter what. And our personal story here is very recent. We just messed this up. We just grew to 25 in the past, 15 months and we reached the point where we realized that there's like miscommunication and it's hindering our like usually really fast growth that there's four like decision makers and we do a little bit of each other's work and it's never clear who has to like keep this partnership up move forward like you know call the shots and we had to sit down and decide who's the role to actually move that forward. It doesn't matter if everybody else is also working on that partnership or also working on that communication. There needs to be a person who is responsible for the whole thing and has to move everything forward. Oh, and the subgroups. 
um, I don't know if this is, or it's fully subjective, if it's priority for you, it's really for us. You have to make sure that people get divided in these subgroups based on merit and their curiosity and their interests. So they actually work on something that they like. We have the, you know, the 2080 principle and we always make sure that people do 80% of their work is something that they love doing and they can't stop thinking about and 20% what needs to be done. Like we have to do that. You can skip that. What we try to keep that ratio alive. And the strengths and weaknesses. Here, this is super obvious. I'm not going to talk too much about it. Um, all I can say is that you have to review the full organization as a whole for strengths and weaknesses and individual specifically, um, which is one-on-one -on -one conversations and a lot of supporting like self-management, self-growth and individuals who want to look inside themselves and kind of help them support this way, maybe even hire a psychologist sometimes for consultancy to have tests or something to help people recognize what their skills actually are. We did a survey not long ago. It was only 14 people who, who did it, but it was really, really good feedback that we saw how like what we really value culture was like the top rated and the work environment was the top rated thing that we do best. So do that. It's really good feedback for you too. Next one is goals. For us, we, as like a newbie company, we've, doing some, we've been doing some entrepreneur startup work before, but we've never had a crypto company before. And with that and the space changing so fast and everything that you all know, we didn't see more than for the past six months, we've been working in a way that we only sold the grand vision of what we want in like five years and the next month. There was like no in between, which really showed we barely, we didn't have a deck or anything because we could, you know, we have a public roadmap that's for like our next month and few integrations, but we could not see before. And for this, I really want to say, have one thought about what you have your grand vision for, you know, the ultimate goal, have one thing that you want to achieve this year or next year, have one thing for the next six months. It can be one sentence, one, just one thing that's a goal and one thing for the next month or this month that you're working in. And the last thing is the adjustments based on everything that you just did. All these you have to go through every month, take everything that you learned. And this is going to be the base of where you need to ask for advice, who you need to ask for advice. Is there a hole in the team? Is there a hole in the whole system? Where are we losing like effective work? Where are people not happy? And this is also the point where you can decide if I need to hire more people, if I need to fire somebody. Um, you have to learn how to fire people and firing is not a bad thing. It's good for both parties. I know it's, I don't know if it sounds weird, but you know, if you fire somebody because it, they didn't fit in the, the company, it's good for them because they have, they don't waste time with you. It's kind of like a relationship, you know, like you break up and they don't waste time with you anymore. They go do their own thing and they probably hopefully will find something that fits way better for everybody. And they usually, you fire them because they hinder the, hinder the organization in some, in some way, shape or form and learn how to fire. It's not bad. Just communicate very clearly, have patience, time for growth and everything. And sunsetting projects and pivoting. We did so, so much narrowing and pivoting in the beginning last year because we had, we tried to solve all the things at the same time. It doesn't work. People don't get it. You can't communicate that. So we, we narrowed it down, that worked. And the sunsetting part, it also helps to look through all of these things. And sometimes we do a lot of research and development. So we have a lot of groups working on different things. And then we sunsetted quite a few projects because job satisfaction is super, super important for us. And there were people in the team working on a project that we made up and they liked it. They were great at it, but it wasn't their thing. Like they weren't super passionate about it. And it also, it was, it was on Solana. So you know how that goes. Um, it was like we built community. We tried to build for a community on Solana and it's not really a thing. Um, but it was more important for us that the people didn't like working on it. So we didn't push it. We put it in the drawer. We might take it out sometime. We might put the same thing on Ethereum. We'll see. Oh, sorry guys. Anyway, that was my last thing. Oh, oh nice, sweet. There, there we go. Okay. Uh, last, the conclusions. Um, it's everything I said before. So take these regular checks, have seasons for growth, for stronger growth, for bigger growth. 
but this is what I mean by seasons of focus, have smaller nodes in the company based on merit and interest. So this way there's more accountability, responsibility, and decision making. There has to be a critical eye for what your strengths and weaknesses are. Be like as bold to yourself as possible. Don't, if, doesn't do anyone any help if you lie to yourself. Know your weaknesses. We really knew, coming from Eastern Europe, we really knew we need more network exposure. So that's how we looked for partners in the space in the beginning. And then do at least um, one goal a year, one for six months, one for one month that gives you enough to think about and actually focus on areas of work and then take your reflections and adjust everything accordingly so that everybody can be as happy in the company as possible. Does this include the questions or not? <laughs> oh, I guess not. Okay. Um, thank you so much. I wanted to ask one person or the audience if they know the organizations that they work at or for what their mission statement is because i think if you don't then do these but uh, i guess i don't want to yeah i'll probably have to go so think about that if you don't know what that is talk with everybody in the team and figure that out because it's a very long process to figure that out but the most important because that's the core of everything um, that we discuss congratulations on doing that <laughs> thank you so much for listening